priest that helped David when Absalom was running, when Absalom was chasing David, he went on, uh, the other boys, uh, um, you know, he was going to join the coup. So King Solomon says, you're no longer going to be a priest. You have been sent to seclusion. And he put another man, Zadok, that's verse 35, and put him as the priest. Now, Abathar was the fourth generation from Eli. Does anybody remember Eli? Eli was the priest that refused to reprimand his two boys. So the women would come to church to get a blessing, and they would force the women not to become pure anymore. Then they would also take the offerings, and they said, we want it raw. You say, why do they want it raw? They're going to eat a bunch of raw meat? No. They were going to sell it and make some money, get drunk, get some money, get some booze. And God and that old priest knew about it, and never, never reprimanded his, uh, his family. I told my, uh, my daughter one time, I said, now, you're with this young man here. I said, I hope everything goes great. I said, but when you die, you know you're going to heaven, right? He says, yes, I know. I said, you know he's going to hell, right? Unless he gets born again, gets saved. Mm. They don't want to hear that. If you're, if you're Eli and you're a man of God, you have to tell people the truth. Right. I was sitting there and getting a haircut. I was telling my wife about it. And this woman says, uh, you know, uh, I said, you know, where do you live for? I said, this, you know, uh, I said, I used to have a church in Conroe. I said, but there's a preacher right there in the border. His name is Randy Ever. Why don't you go, go over there at his church? She said, I don't believe in people judging other people. And, and uh, she said, I don't believe preachers ought to tell somebody to go ahead just because they're, you know, uh, they're gay or, you know, and, and so I'm thinking, oh, Lord, what do you want me to tell this woman? <laughs> and the Lord said, well, she's cutting your hair. You better be real sweet. At least you wind up with a mohawk. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay. So I started telling her about my experience going to church. I said, well, I went to church. I said, people said I had long hair and, you know, I was smoking dope and I was doping myself to death and... I said, that old man put down every one of my heroes, John Wayne. I said, he, he ain't no cowboy. He, look at this magazine. He's carrying a purse right here. He's an he's actor, man. He's a pretender. He said, he's a pretender. I was not the Duke, man. Don't mess with the Duke. Not John Wayne. But every hero I had, he put down. Every hero. And I just got mad. I kept telling him, I'd get mad. I'd get mad. I told him, well, we ain't going back. I we go back. Sunday, we'd show up again. I said, and all I can tell you is, one day I got saved. And I said, like your mother-in-law moving in. She's sitting in your favorite seat, won't let go of the remote. The cheesecake you had in the refrigerator, she done ate, that you had saved specifically to, to eat that night. She done ate it, all right? I said, you know she's there. I said, God ever moves in your heart. I said, you'll know. Amen. Amen, yeah. She's almost finished. I said, now listen. I said, God is a God of love. Amen. And Christ died on that cross. He paid for every sin of man. Everything. God doesn't care about your lifestyle. God don't care about any of your sins. I said, God is a God of love. But God is a God of wrath. And there's only one reason why you go to hell. That's because you rejected God's love and rejected his son. No. Mm. That's the only sin. I said, I looked up at the stars one day and I said, God, I want to know the God that made the stars and I want to know His Son. I said, a couple weeks later, somebody invited me to church. I said, I got, I got born again. I said, I ain't never been the same since. I said, and I gave her a tip after she finished. I said, I want to look at the stars. Look at the stars and ask God. You've got to know what to do. Amen. 
Eli should have told his boy, now listen, son, I'm going to have to not allow you to come to the temple as long as you're acting this way. All right? Now listen, you don't get drunk, stay at home, get drunk. Come to church. You want to do whatever you're doing, fine. But you don't go sinning in, the, in God's church. Amen. You're supposed to be a man of God. Don't be sinning in God's church. Amen. So Avatar, it took God four generations before he told Eli, none of your children are going to sit on this. Uh, be, I'll be a priest anymore. It takes God a while. So the next one, they call the guy that, uh, verse 36, King Solomon calls the guy that cursed David, uh, Shemai. He said, build your house in Jerusalem. Dwell there. Don't leave. If you pass over the, book, the brook, Kedron, you can go outside the wall. But if you go past the brook, I'm going to have you killed. And he said, that's a great idea. Thank you so much. I'm going to live right here in Jerusalem. I'm going to be a city boy. The only problem was, three years passed, and his servants ran away. Why did his servants leave? Well, the servants left. Uh, I guess he was just a little bit too rough. Amen. And so, verse 40, he got on his saddle and brought him back. Verse 41, they told Solomon, the old man's gone. He said, bring him here. He said, you didn't keep what I told you. Verse 44, he tells him, Thou knowest all the wickedness with thine heart is privy to that that did us today with my father. Therefore the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thy own head. He waited three years. King Solomon waited three years for this guy to make this mistake. Mm -hmm. And that mistake cost him his life. I got a message on only one mistake will take you off the game. You do one thing wrong, you're off the board. You're off the board. He said, and, and then Solomon, King Solomon, and the King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded who? Amen. I love this guy. I love him. Don't you love a guy like that? He takes out his sword. Guess what? He kills Ben and I. He kills him right there on the spot. <laughs> Man of God sometimes has to do things that nobody else has to do. Has to do. As a pastor, my job is to tell people that they come to this church, amen, if you're a member, amen. Uh, you know, you ought to do what God tells you to do. Amen. amen. You're not, if you're just a visitor, do whatever you want. Mm. Amen. You don't blind us. I have no rule over you. But if I'm your pastor, then I have authority. King Solomon said, I really don't care if you're saved, not saved. Amen. You're part of the kingdom, so guess what? We're going to do things my way. Amen. Yeah. There was no democracy. By the way, heaven, are you ready for you Democrats and Republicans that like to vote? <laughs> Guess what? You get no vote when you get to heaven. Man. Shall we have a celebration today? <laughs> no, no vote. Shouldn't we throw this guy? No. It's not a democracy. The kingdom of heaven is going to be run by Jesus Christ, amen, amen, with a rod of iron. You say, what's that rod of iron for? Hitting people. Mm -hmm. During the millennium, thousand years go by. 
We get to rain on earth. Nothing can hurt us. No snakes, no spiders. I mean, lions and tigers and bears are all going to eat just with grass. Don't be gentle as can be. You can ride on a bear. I mean a polar bear. I want to be, I want to be on a polar bear. Amen. You know, run around. Amen. I had a Take a couple snakes, throw them, you know, throw them around at people, you know. They can't bite you, you know. They, they eat everything. And, uh, but not everybody during that millennium will be saved. Hmm. You say, how do you know? Because the devil is loose for a season. Two verses. I think it's a verse. Is it one verse or two verses? Give me one. I'm getting old, so don't, 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 don't hold me to that account, all right? But one verse, it gets loose. And I think the other half of the verse, he gets destroyed. Mm. It's like a, but he starts a rebellion. You say, with who? All the people that did not like Christ being a dictator. Mm. How dare you tell me I need to be holy and righteous and everything else? Now, this is the perfect, perfect scenario. Well, people going to have all kinds of excuses when they stand before the judgment day. Uh, you know, they're going to say, it's my nationality. I was angry. I was Hispanic. I was black. I was a Filipino. I was a Vietnamese. I was a Chinese. You, couldn't, you didn't see the stars. You didn't see the moon. You couldn't pray and ask God. I want another God who made everything. You couldn't pray that? No. They're going to blame my environment. Hey, man. I live here. In, I used to live here in the hood. I saw more violence in my... By the time I was 18, I was an old man. I was ready to settle down. I met my wife. By the age of 19, we was married. You say, why? I had survived. I thought, this is it. years to go. Even if I keep up this lifestyle, I'm going to die. All my friends I knew were dying during that time. Some people are going to blame their background. Their parents. Any excuse will do when you're fixing to go to hell. Why didn't you accept Christ? Why didn't you accept Christ? Why didn't you accept Christ? People in the millennium, what excuse are they going to give? It was a perfect government. Christ was in charge. I was a Democrat or Republican or Independent, and I didn't get a chance to vote on nothing. No. no. My environment. Now, those people knew who God was. No. All those people that died had a chance to do right. But they decided, no. Nah. Ain't gonna do it. Ain't gonna do it. Bless you. I'm not Bless waiting you. on God. This is what I want. Joe Ab wanted to be the uh, head captain. He's willing to kill people for it, for that job. Guess what? You live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Yeah. You know, them two boys, both wanted to be king, both conniving brothers, they grew up the same way, mm. tried to con the country. Most of the country was still mad that David became king again. God got angry and said, well, I got, I'll just get Satan to get David to count everybody. Everybody died. A bunch of people died here in Israel. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, a bunch of people. I think it was 70,000. Did I get my number right? Mm -hmm. I can't remember what I said. Amen. Uh, a couple chapters ago, but, uh, whatever it was a few days ago that I said, that's how many died. Amen. Why? God was mad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was upset. I dare you be mad at my king. I put him in charge. You know what people don't want? They don't want a pastor. They don't want a preacher. See, a preacher just preaches to you. A pastor, you're supposed to be, he is in charge 
of the church. And when he tells you to do something, he actually expects you to do it. Amen. Amen. I mean, we walk in here all the time. Wouldn't it be great if we could actually mop in here? And people go, the people that own this building would actually say, wow, they actually cleaned up. Right. What, a, what a great group. What a great group to help clean up. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You have a call? Right. Brother Hank Thompson, he was uh, at a church in, in Colorado. <laughs> Un unemployment, I mean, it was bad. Nobody could get a job. So he decided to ask God, God told him to move to Austin. He said, I, I don't want to move to Austin, Texas. He said, I'm from Colorado. I love the mountains. He said, I don't care. Move to Austin. He said, all right, prove it to me, God. He said, if you can find somebody to put, sell, sell my house and sell everything I got here, I'm not going to put it for sale sign. If you can prove it to me, I will sell. And I will move. Next thing you know, you want for this house? Ah! Hey, I want that wood burning stove. I want to buy it. He said, how do you convince people to buy a wood burning stove? I mean, that's back in the day, man. I, I mean, how are you going to bake and cook and everything out with a wood burning stove? So he moved. Half of his church moved. Their whole families moved. They had three or four families living in one house. I'm talking about three or four. When the pastor moved, everybody moved. I mean, they all moved. They all got jobs. Seventh day at the church, had church on Saturday. He said, can we party the building on, on Sunday? They kept the building so clean. They kept the building looking so nice, and they would pray, God, give us a building. God, give us a grill. And they'd fast. They'd pray. You know what God finally did? He said, we'll give you the building. Seventh day, I bought a bigger church. They said, you've done such a great job keeping this place up. We're going to give you the bill. And they just turned around and gave it to me. Say, why? They wanted to bless you. And people wanted to bless you. They said, these people are going to take care of this church. Amen. 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 <clears throat> King Solomon took care of business. Hmm. Pastor's job is to take care of business. Your job is to take care of business. That's your own soul. Take care of it. Amen. Amen. Father, we love you. We pray God.